Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. Welcome to another vlog inspired by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group. This week's topic is, if books were allowed scents to signify contents, what would your favourite books smell like? Hmm. Let's think. Uh, Lovecraftian fiction. The scent of Lovecraftian fiction. Uh, ancient texts, maybe? Some sort of musty bookish smell, which would be counterproductive in terms of people thinking that their books were great because they would smell like the books were decaying away. Um, cosmic, what would be the smell of cosmic dread? It's an interesting question. Um, potentially space smells of strawberries, so that. But uh, an unsettling, potentially not quite identifiable scent, maybe. Uh, what else? Uh, well, I'm a 40k fiction. Uh, explosions, gun oil, blood, mud, sweat, generally militaristic smells. So that and also the smell of incense. So a mixture of religion and warfare. Uh, what else? Vampire books. Now, it's a more interesting one. And you'd immediately think vampire books are going to smell of blood and gore. But the kind of vampire books I like are <clears throat> about the tension between intellect and beast. A creature that needs intelligent prey. So, possibly, the one thing they definitely wouldn't smell like is blood and gore. It would be the, uh, the absence of the smell of blood. A creature that looks human, but has a subtle wrongness because it doesn't sweat. It doesn't have the same gut flora. It takes very great care not to smell of blood. So the slight scent of cleanliness undercut with an absence of human scent, which again be a, a little tricky to make potentially. But uh, one interesting thing is whether I'd actually want books to have a scent. I mean, scent is a very evocative sense. If you smell something, it brings back memories a lot better than seeing a trigger, usually does. But to have six books on a shelf, all having a scent, it would, they'd get muddled up and it would be like listening to six television programs or radio stations at the same time. It'd start to create noise, they'd start to conflict, it wouldn't feel great. So maybe I'd only want scents in books if the scent was activated on opening. In which case, potentially, I wouldn't want a single scent on a book. You'd want the scents to be linked to the pages. So Trench Warfare had a subtle whiff of mud, decaying vegetable matter, explosions, rusting metal, stagnant water, and so on. And marching across green open countryside had a subtly undercut fresh grass smell. So the text is talking about the paranoia of warfare, but the scent is a summer's day. So that could be quite an interesting juxtaposition. But and even with subtle scents, I'm not sure that I'd want them. In reading about the horrors of a gut wound is traumatic. You can close the book and put it down, but actually getting a face full of the scent, you know, I've never been 
in a trench during a war. But I understand that it's quite a foul place. So possibly having the sense, whilst they would make it more realistic, would take the book from the enjoyment section to the graphic realism section. So I'd only want it on textbooks that were actually talking about what a situation was like, rather than in fiction books where I'm trying to escape. So whilst I want immersion, I also want a certain divide where I can imagine things the way I want to imagine them without feeling the full horror of it even after I've closed the book because there's still the scent lingering in the air. It's, it's already hard enough carrying books everywhere I go if I had to carry some sort of scent stopping paraphernalia as well to clear up the scent after I've closed the book. That would become onerous. And then what would happen if my wife and I were reading different books in pages travel on line of sight and you can turn away from them. But scent travels along air currents, flows around corners. So if I was reading a vampire novel and my wife was reading a sci-fi novel, we'd get the smell of laser burns, explosions and rocket fuel mixing with the scent of slightly aged lace and that little cut of blood just at the moment of the bite. And the two would not necessarily sit well together, so it would make reading even more of a solitary experience. You wouldn't just be focused on the book. You'd have to physically wall yourself away from other people who weren't reading the book, whether through a physical barrier or through some fan-based air conditioning unit. So I think it would require actually an extreme change in technology to be able to do it so that it wouldn't actually be sense it would be sending something into your head so that you thought at that moment you were smelling and once you got to the point where it's only in your head you raise the question of whether there is actually any difference between something that is designed to put the thought of a summer's day in your head and words which, when read, put the thought of a summer's day in your head. It's, and if you do get an induction that is different, some way of putting the author's experience into your head, is that going to be meaningful? if the author's experience of things is different. My wife and I can eat the same meal, drink the same wine, and have a different experience of it because our palates are different. So if I were to take my wife's experience of sniffing a glass of Beaujolais, would that be meaningful to me? Or would that be a little bit bland. If I'd just eaten a really strong cheese, would having the scent of something induced in my head be a different experience? So I don't know if scent induction or scent wafting, whatever, would work in the same way as getting the experience purely from the words because the brain is taking the words, turning them into the image 
and dealing with the post-processing to deal with the environment. Whereas if it's direct wafting, whilst you could get a deeper experience because there's more evidence you're actually there, you'd also be more open to juxtapositions because you're not actually there, you're sitting on the sofa where there are a whole bunch of other scents. So your brain won't necessarily go, this is a book scent, this is an outside world scent, so I'll treat them differently in the way that it would, where it goes, this is an outside world scent because I can smell it, this is a memory of a scent because I'm processing it from the page. So, possibly, my answer would be, if books were allowed scents to signify context, my favourite books would smell like books. Because, for me, the technology of scent wafting, scent induction, doesn't sit well with the way that I experience a book. In the same way that some books on tablets can be synchronized with a soundtrack using a website or an app or something, but I don't read books that way, despite the fact I could, because I don't want, need, find more immersive having a synchronized soundtrack. So it's an interesting thing in the same way the director's commentary on a film is an interesting thing, but it's an insight into someone else's experience rather than an actual experience myself. So the first time it gets in the way. And the second time I'm doing it to find out how someone else experienced it rather than because I want that experience of the book for myself. So books that smell of books. Toodaloo.